Here we go. Hello, everybody. Okay. All right, here we go. Hopefully the sound is clear and hopefully uh, you guys can see everything clearly enough. Okay. All right. Hello. My name is Matt Cawson, and I'm going to be doing a live drawing right now of Midoriya from My Hero Academia, one of my favorite mangas. And I've only watched the first season, I think, of uh, the anime. Anime. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I always like the heroes. Where are they? protagonist in the story the lead and Midoriya is uh, he's cool he's uh I like how he grows from being the kind of insecure type of character but he has like a lot of heart and that's what pushes him through all the troubles and everything but uh so I'm gonna start off here on uh I'm gonna try to do some watercolor on it too so let's see start off with the head and usually what I do is I start off I start off with uh, I kind of mark everything where I want it to be because I want to end up drawing the, the head and I like it and then I also have no room for the body so I gotta I have to uh, make sure I get everything lined up let's see you know the thing for the pose I want to do I'm gonna have to go shift it a little more but yeah as you've seen on the title I'm doing a uh, I'm doing a contest to help promote our new comic project called Agenda which I'm working on with writer James Hudnall and my brother Mikey Cawson who's coloring it and he's doing a great job on the colors um, we're just doing the Indiegogo. It's been, I think this is like the second or third week we're on it. And there's about a month left. And so far we are at 64% of our goal. So 64% funded. I'd like to thank everybody who uh, backed us so far. And if you haven't backed us, I ask you to uh, do what you can to kind of help back us, get a chance to get the book. And if you can't even help back right now at the moment, like I said, we're up for a month, but it'd be nice if you could put up a, a link to our Indiegogo, which brings us to the contest I have. If you uh, want to enter this contest, the quickest way, the only way to enter is by posting in the, in the uh, description, post our link to our Indiegogo campaign on your social media. So Twitter or uh, Facebook, Instagram and just post that and we will uh, enter you into the contest and we'll do is basically do almost like a drop your name in a hat type of way of picking the win choosing the winner so yeah just go ahead and do that and, uh, and what I'll do is the contest winner the prize they will get a drawing of their favorite or requested character so just whoever wins I'll uh, contact you and you can give me which character you want me to draw and I'll do a pen and ink drawing of that character so just uh, yeah let me you let me know once uh, you win which character you want but yeah go ahead and post that up there I'd appreciate it we all appreciate it and appreciate everybody's efforts to help make this happen too because I like today they have these outlets where fans can not only just you know see what the artists are doing but not the writers but they can actually interact with them and even just help them out on their actual projects okay for this I'm just kind of laying out Kind of spacing everything out, making sure everything is clear. I have a, enough room to do everything I want to do. So these lines aren't even final. They're just going to be 
a placement. Okay. Let's see here. Deku's wild hair. I take his hair. Okay. Okay, so I got the basic layout here. Get that then I just kind of for me personally I like to start with the face so once I get like a face going and I I feel good about the face then it kind of inspires me to keep going and put more into the rest of the drawing see of course the eyes All right. I should get this zoom in. Can I zoom in on this? Oh, nice, nice. Good. Ah, I got one of my favorite. So yeah, so I didn't even know about the uh, about the the anime of the My Hero Academia until like I was perusing through. Uh, was it Hulu? And I was kind of surprised. I may have been. I was reading the manga. I didn't even know anything about the manga. I just happened to see it on the shelf at uh, Barnes and Noble, and I picked it up. And I was like, "Oh, this is cool. Japanese superhero book." And they are look pretty sweet. So I'm like, "I'll check it out." And the story was cool. The characters engaging. So I'm like, "Man." And then I go, "People got to know about this." And <laughs> Then I stuck my head out from under, uh, from out of my artist foxhole, and I found out that's already been going on with people already knew about it, the anime, fan club, and all that. Like I'm almost late to the party. Better late than never, though, right? So let's see. Hmm. That's one thing. His eyes look a little bit closer together. what I like about the different manga styles like some are so extremely cartoony which my background is more into like um, naturalistic or quote-unquote realistic type of proportions drawn people but uh, I like drawing uh, the really cartoony stuff my brother Mikey who also colors the agenda he's more of a cartoonist than I and he's actually introduced me and influenced me in uh, different cartoony styles. I actually really appreciate them more than I did when I first started. You know, I was always into realistic, like Norman Rockwell type stuff, and uh, I was always into that. It's like a challenge. I was like, was like, man, I'm trying to get better to get my proportions down. And uh, as soon as I started getting the hang of that, I realized, yeah, the cartoony stuff was always appealing to me, but that is just as hard. Actually, if, if not harder, because as a cartoonist, you have nothing really to draw upon except your imagination when you're drawing. Um, when you're creating, I mean, that's when you're creating your own characters. Uh, but as an artist, when you're doing realistic, you have a certain set of rules and, uh, proportions and all that that you adhere to and you have a reference that you can work from and it's still not it's not easy but it's it's something that you can improve uh, or you can gauge your improvement on whether it looks like a person <laughs> you can tell if it's a person you're drawing or if the figure looks off I mean most any artist or not even non-artist can tell if a drawing of a person is off because we all know what a person a human looks like and if they're uh, 
the portions are way off from the norm of what we're used to seeing every day, then it's easy to, to find out what that is. Or even if they don't know how to identify it, they know that something's not right. Is Deku is his nickname. I'm gonna give him a crooked smile. I should have ate something before I started this video because I'm starting to feel it now. Oh boy. started this new, uh, it's not a diet, but it's a new way of eating. It's, for me, it's um, low carb, high fat diet. And uh, the aim is to get into ketosis where your body is burning fat for energy instead of burning sugar. And it's, so far I like it. I eat Bacon in the mornings. Oh, bacon, bacon and eggs, and a salad. All right. And then uh, something that sounds a little gross, but it actually I had this tip and actually works um, for energy. I get like a slice of cheese, and I put butter in between the cheese, two slices, and eat that. As like an energy snack and uh, I use real butter though it's like Irish cream I can't remember the name but it's good I'm telling you sounds gross but it actually tastes good and it does give you energy it's... Start concentrating on this thing. Yeah, another one I'm into is I like, uh, was it One Punch Man? That's one of my favorites too. Definitely One Punch Man is on there. It's uh, my favorite, one of my favorite mangas. And also, the, again, the anime was like, I didn't find out about the anime until till after I was reading the manga. It's gonna raise his fist a little bit. Yeah, One Punch Man is crazy. Man, I love that. It's just, I love a book that has the hero. It's just so incredibly powerful. And uh, I know in writing, you're always, it's always, you want the hero to have an enemy that is rivals the protagonist. I mean, the uh, yeah, the protagonist. You want an antagonist that rivals the protagonist. You want him to be like stronger in some ways, and uh, it's kind of refreshing to see a, a character who's the hero who's just like pretty much indestructible and can take on anything. It's just like a piece of cake, but it's so well written because even though he is like um, almost. He surpasses any villain, any hero that he encounters with ease. It's it's still there's things that he has to uh, encounter that he's not used to uh, dealing with people. You know, dishonesty, deceit. He sometimes comes off as being like very um, naive, but you can see. I mean, there's. It's, it's not really a naivety, it's, he might be innocent in some ways, but he surprises you and the, the villains when he shows that he knows what's going on. He just, it's like a, an act at times, which is great, but it still seems like he still learns, uh, despite having all that power, he still learns how to deal with people and how to deal with himself. 
in that power. And let's see, back to My Hero Academia. Uh, that's one thing I like about is the hero or the main uh, protagonist, the uh, Midoriya. Is, I like him so much because I think a lot of, we can relate. A lot of people can relate to that type of character where you have this desire and this love of something you want to be a part of or you want to do, and but you don't have maybe that natural uh, gift or it doesn't come as easy for you as it seems like it comes for others, but you just sometimes you got more heart than the ones who actually can do it. And uh, but that drive and that heart, it just uh, comes out comes out in everything he does even if he doesn't seem like he has like a lot of flash i mean even the way he looks that the way the artist designed him i mean a lot of the other characters have more flash i mean they uh, you know appearance wise so i think it was cool how he kept that consistent with the character he the way he looked is not as flashy but what separates him from a lot of the characters for me is his heart Get into inking this very soon. Let's see how long we've been going. Been long enough. Sixteen minutes. Okay. I have to get a better setup too for this because it's a little tricky drawing wise. I kind of have to, I have to kind of work around this tripod I have set up. So I'm kind of entangled in it. Kind of makes it a little awkward to draw, but get that fixed. Probably get a new tripod. But yeah, My Hero Academia, uh, that's another book I like. Um, I'm trying to think of another one here. If you guys have any, if you guys have any, uh, let's see. If you guys have any favorite characters, let me know. Any favorite mangas I don't know about? Oh, another one is, um, I just stumbled upon this. Uh, I've seen the uh, covers of the manga. They have the smiley face on it, but I, I didn't pick it up. I didn't know what it was. It just looked kind of weird to me, which I usually am into the weird stuff, but I guess the cover didn't attract my attention because of just the smiley face. And uh, that was uh, Assassination Classroom. And that was actually something I just started watching the anime of on Hulu and uh that was actually fun too I actually started getting into that it's, it's a weird it's a weird premise and concept I mean which is not unusual for Japanese mangas or anime but uh yeah yeah it was weird <laughs> it uh it's basically if you don't know what it's about it's this classroom it's kind of like uh, for degenerates or for like troubled students. And um, they are introduced to a new teacher who is, an, he looks like an alien, basically with tentacles. And he's got that smiley face. And they're told by the government that they have been selected or they have to kill the teacher because if they don't kill him within a certain period of time, he is going to uh, destroy the earth. So the only way to kill him is using these special weapons 
They're basically just like rubber, plastic rubber knife, but this material, this rubber material, it can, it's the only thing that kills them. Like the bullets, knives, real knives, stuff doesn't work. It's, it's got to be this material. So they have knives made out of that rubber plastic material, and they also have these pellet guns that shoot the same material. So basically it's just like lethal, lethal weapons, lethal ammo against him. But the thing is, is he's super fast. So they can't even... It's not easy to kill him. And at the same time, he's actually teaching them class studies. And even teaching them how to uh, fight. Which is, it's just strange. I mean, the guy's... This creature is teaching them to, get, to kill him, how to kill him. I don't know. It's just... It's really weird, but it's fun. It's actually enjoyable sounds strange and it is strange but okay i think we got most of them down here i'm going to start at least enough for me to start inking since i'm doing the inking i always i like to keep pencils semi-rough this is probably tight to some people and maybe it is but i used to be a lot more tight than this That was one of the things that kind of bugged me is I always want to be loose. I would see these artists who could draw really loose, sketchy style and inking and everything. And I always was like, man, I want to do that. And that just, it's hard for me to let loose sometimes, but I try to work hard at looking like it's loose. Okay. So yeah, again, the comic that I'm working on uh, it's called Agenda, and it's basically, what it is, it is a superhero comic, but it's unlike other superhero comic books today, because the characters, multiple different, uh, multiple superhero characters, here, okay, I'm going to use the dip pen, just so you know, I like to use a G-nib, mostly, so... I'm going to zoom out a little, maybe. No, maybe I'll zoom in. All right. Here we go. Okay. Let's see. Let's start with his hair, because it kind of overlaps a little bit. But yeah, uh, the, here, the characters in the agenda are, they all come from different backgrounds, and they have different... Um, points of view of how the world should be like they don't all agree on on uh, the dynamics of like uh, their their own uh, agendas kind of run into conflict with uh, every other hero and uh the purpose of that is the story is is that the reader can kind of determine which characters they align themselves with most like what what seems more uh, the correct way of helping the earth and the world Let's see but we got some cool characters so far I've really had fun drawing uh, one of my favorites, you have Machine Queen, and she's a Japanese inventor. She does uh, robots. Oh, is that coming on? Yeah, she creates the robots. She's like a, she's a, it's like a billionaire inventor. She owns a giant company. That does these uh, produces robots, but she uses her powers to uh, to control like different drones and robots, things that she invents. She control them with the suit that she has. And you see a picture of her on the Indiegogo front page, and uh, James will give you a better breakdown of the story. I, I just. I'm kind of afraid to give too much information out. Let's see. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the tools, I don't know if you guys are familiar with these, the ink nibs. And man, this light is kind of low too. I started using these. Um, As I've seen, I like the line quality they, they give once they use them correctly. It's not always easy. Uh, sometimes the nib can get snagged on paper. And of course you got to keep going back to the inkwell and dipping that in. But I started using these because I like the line quality. And uh, with the ink pens, I'd always have to keep doubling up on the lines to get that thick and thin type of look. And I did want to have to keep doing that. I like just to kind of go over the line once and it's done. And you can do that with this like 90%, 99, 95% of the time, I guess. And there's different ways to hold this. Uh, I've seen different artists I like holding it. Like um, usually this little curve is down, face downward. The little curve. I've seen them use it upside down before, and I do not know how they can get a line because I tried to do it myself. And for the life of me, I never can get a line. No ink will come out when I use hold it upside down. So. Definitely like to learn how in the world they do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And sometimes they'll pencil is just a guideline. Well, it always has a guideline, but I mean, sometimes I'll just totally ignore the pencil and it helps kind of place, it makes like a marker, it places like the area of the vicinity where I want the line to be, the final line, but sometimes in the middle of ink and I realize, you know what, these need to be changed, parts need to be moved, and sometimes I'll have to kind of stop inking Repencil, erase, and repencil, but sometimes I can just go right in. Just make the change straight in with ink. Okay, I'm still here, I'm just checking out something here. Okay. And another thing too, when you're using that dip pen, and using this, the nibs, you have to make sure that you're very careful because of the ink you have to make sure it's dried before you actually work on put your hand down on top of that because sometimes I gotta shift the paper to kind of get a line. 
and you got to make sure that that's dry or you're going to put your hand to rest down because I've smeared so many drawings this way. There is pain. Okay, so just gonna pull you some more lines down. Same. Yeah, so on agenda, I'm about a quarter of the way finished with the art. And so far, I'm very happy with it. As an artist, uh, being an artist, you probably feel the pain of, you know, having a problem with your work. Sometimes it seems like it doesn't come out the way you want it to instantly, so the frustration starts to mount. And uh, I've definitely gone through that a lot on a constant basis. But I think as time goes, you kind of learn how to deal with that. Use that frustration or that energy just to put more uh, intent in your work. But yeah, Deku. I believe, like I said, his name's Deku as a nickname. Midoriya. My Hero Academia. I also like All Might. Obviously, All Might is one of my favorites as well, but. I don't know, I think, I think he gets a lot of coverage, I don't know. Big giant, strong dude. Midoriya is a little more. I'm gonna zoom out here. All right now, let's go up here. Midoriya is a little bit more, not plain, but average, I guess, compared to a lot of the weird characters in the manga. For all you artists out there, one of the things I like about different manga artists, and thus it seems like it's pretty consistent with most of them, is when they're drawing like the hands, 
of the fists, they usually don't usually don't draw in the knuckles um, from certain angles. Um, of course, you're going to show the top of the ridge of the, hand, the fist. You do, but usually you don't, and it, it looks so much better. It looks more readable and more clean to me. center of this here. Like I said, my setup is a little awkward because I got this little tiny tripod sitting right in front of me and I'm trying to work around it. So it's a little tricky to kind of draw and ink with this in the way, but I'm going to get a better setup in the near future. And for those of you just joining, uh, hello, and I just want to let you know I'm just using it if you already are familiar with what it is. It's the uh, G-nib, and I like using these dip pens. The last few years I've just been using them, and I'm still actually kind of getting the hang of them, but man, I just love them so much more than just inking with pen. Every pen I use, it seems like it just dries out like in the middle of a line. And I'm mean, sure that can happen with these if you forget to dip it back into the inkwell, but yeah, it's just a pain, just every pen I get, and uh, I think it's because when you go over top of the pencil, the graphite, it just kind of like, um, over time, it kind of dries out your pen nib on the uh, tech pens. And, uh, and this does not, it doesn't happen with this, this the ink just goes right on you just got a steel or whatever metal and it does not does not dry out I mean unless it runs out of ink like it just did now yeah and see sometimes you get a little bit of splatter like that which like I said earlier, I kind of want to be loose with my stuff, so to me, I don't really care. I kind of like it. That's about as bad as it gets, though, for me. I wish it could be as loose as... Is it Sinkowitz or Sinkowitz? I like his stuff a lot. But it's not my natural proclivity, or whatever you want to say. It's my natural tendency is to be tight so this for me is as loose as it's going to get proclivity that's what it is okay let's see zoom in out zoom out a little let's see how it's taking shape but yeah like I said the dip pens are nice to um are the nibs I should say uh because so far, well, I use an ink. I use Black Cat ink. It's like a waterproof ink. So if I go over this with watercolor, which I plan on doing, won't smear the lines, won't bleed ink. And like I said, you have to be careful. And the only downside to this is it takes a while to dry some of the lines. So you have to be very careful when you, I want to, I don't want the paper to slide, but I can't touch it with my hand. So I got to try to, in between the lines, Make sure I don't touch it, but kind of hold this paper steady. Too many times I've actually smeared these lines. I still do it from time to time. You get into a drawing, you forget about the dry time, and you're just like cr trying to crank it out. And some guys actually use like a little dryer, like a, looks like a hair dryer dry the lines so they can just keep moving which is probably what I should be doing especially on projects with that tight deadline move a little quicker
But yeah, I, I do like enjoy these. Like I said, I don't care you have to dip it. To me, it's flying. It's just, man, it's, it just goes right down on the paper. and You don't have to keep going over the line over and over until it shows up. But yeah, definitely, uh, as far as the mangas go, My Hero Academia is one of my favorites. One Punch Man. Of course, some of the older ones like Battle Angel, Alita, which the movie's coming out of that soon. But uh, they, I think he started a new book. It's um, it's Battle Angel when she was like a kid before she became a cyborg. And I don't know if there's any commentary I gotta check. This is my first live video on YouTube, so I'm still learning, figuring out how to do this. Okay. Like I said, the pencils, I always keep the pencils rough. And it basically, there's kind of like markers on where I need to put stuff. And I wish it could be like Mobius, who could actually, he would just go right in with ink. I could just basically do like a circle for a head <laughs> on some of the drawings and just go right in and start inking faces, features, facial features. But I still need a little bit more established lines and pencil before I can actually go in with ink. Maybe one day I'll get there. I think it also takes a willingness to uh, screw up. I've heard it said with writers, just to start writing bad, just just going with the, the purposely intent trying to write, just just write, and uh, in doing that, you'll find that it's not as bad as you thought it was. But you definitely need something to uh, work off of. You need to, something to work off of. So. Same thing with an artist. Just need the pencils sketched down something that's not beautiful, but you need something to work off of the inks. Gotta make sure this is dry here before I put my hand down on it. Yeah. And the lines that are thin, they pretty much. They pretty much dry very quickly, but yeah, this other stuff, these thick areas, I kind of double up a little bit here. They might still be wet, even like, eh, let's dry. They might be wet like a minute or two after you ink the line. So you just got to be very cautious not to touch the lines, just, or at least check before you do, because yeah, the pain of trying to fix that I mean, it's, you can it's fixable but when you're trying to get done with something quickly it is a pain it's frustrating it's, uh, but it's not the end of the world so looks like I got pretty much everything inked and now I'll just kind of add in some details a little bit of rendering see I'll zoom in a little more Like I said, the contest rules uh, that I have going right now is to help promote our book agenda. If you just put the link, which is in the description, to Indiegogo agenda, then just put that in your social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Just drop that link and then tag my name. And uh, that'll enter you into a contest to win some free artwork. And to sweeten the pot, I made it so that you can actually request, the winner can request the character they want drawn. Or, if they want this piece that I'm doing right now, we're going to have this one as well. Uh, it's going to be black and white for the winner, but if you want this piece, 
you can have this one it's going to be colored so but yeah just uh all you have to do is share that link on your instagram facebook twitter tag my name and you'll be entered and we'll draw the name of the winner and announce that in a later video i still have to figure out the time frame i'm going to do a video at least if not every day every other day so that i'll update keep an update on uh when we're going to announce the winner but we want it to run for a little bit so people have a chance to enter okay so let's see now let's start with the hair and with the hair i'm going to use that same technique like i mentioned the I'm going to start using pencil to kind of sketch in the hair. I like using a lot of black space in my drawings, like in my comic pages too, but something about that negative space and the black ink just like pops things out. So let's see. Okay. Gonna do this rough. And you just think about the, the shadowed areas. It's kinda like a ball. I'm gonna have the light's gonna be coming from the left, so it's gonna be shadowed out on this side of his head. But instead of being a perfect ball and having a perfect line, it's gonna be He's got locks of hair kind of flying all over the place, so we're going to add in that and kind of fade out. So all this, I can kind of block it in with some pencil, just so you can kind of get an idea gonna be all shadows. And this put some highlights in the hair here in the shadowed areas. And of course, like I said, with the lines, as I'm inking this it might change. I'm just kind of getting a guideline down for myself. Okay. There we go. He's starting to look like Midoriya. And since it's black, I'm just going to go right in. Yes. It should be dry, the lines on his body. Yeah. Looks like everything's pretty much dry. So I can rest my hand down on top. But if anybody knows of any cool anime or manga that you guys, whatever you're into right now, just go ahead and leave a comment. Because uh, I like to check out new stuff as well. Like I said, uh, Assassination Classroom was something I just ran across when I was surfing uh, Hulu. And that was really weird. I actually got into that one. I got to start picking it up and watching it again. Like My Hero Academia, One Punch Man. Let's see. Okay. I think there's a live chat. Hmm. Like I said, I'm new to this live, so. If I'm not, I'm trying to figure this out, trying to make sure all the features are available. Okay, cool. All right. I just, I'm not sure how to check it, so. Put 
a little bit of seam in here from his glove fingertips. Get the seam. And you gotta make sure it's really light. Seam small. Okay, back to there. And I don't really have to worry about those lines. I just put down because they're so thin, they dry a lot quicker. And they almost instantly dry. It's just the thicker lines that you have to really think about. But if you have any guys have any feedback on these videos, like let me know what you like to see. If there's any problems with audio. I noticed the first few ones I did, my voice was kind of low, so I'm, I don't want to shout. Into, I have a headset on. I don't want to shout into it, but it still sounds really quiet. Just let me know. Sorry about that. Going off screen. And in the new comic I'm doing with James Hudnall, uh, Agenda, it does have like a, a manga uh, flair to it. I tried to do that in the past with different companies that I work for, American companies, and they they always discouraged my uh, manga style. They always told me not to make it look like manga. And so this is my creator-owned project with James, and he said, go for it, whatever you want. Whatever you want to do, it gave me that freedom, that leeway. So I'm going for it. So this will be my first project where I'm just going all out, manga style. And I'm actually having fun with that. And if a lot of you might not know this, and I just found out actually not too not too long ago, even though I've known James for a few years, I found out um, that he actually worked translate. He was a writer uh, doing the translation to adaptions of different manga back in the 80s and 90s. He did, uh, he translated and wrote um, um, it was a 21... 20th first century boys uh, manga artist Naoki Urasawa his uh, manga called Pineapple Army James actually did the American translation for that and uh, I think he also worked on um, some of uh, Akia Asamiya um, he did some of his works too his earlier 80s, 90s stuff. He translated and wrote for those. Okay, almost done with the hair. I'm gonna go in and start inking, drop it in the black shadows. And I didn't fill in where the black's going to be. I kind of, I know where it's going to be. Um, now I got to put this away. So I'm going to put this away with the camera. It's got the ink on there. I don't want it to dry. So I dab it a little bit. But what I do is I have this water. Better not drop this. I use a little dish with water. I kind of dip the nib in there. Kind of soften it up and it cleans it off really good. Paper towels, wipe it down. And if you don't do that, yeah, it, it can mess up your tip, meaning that it just it's hard to get off sometimes the ink after it stays on for too long and it can thicken up the tip of it, the edge, so you don't get a nice fine line that you would otherwise. Alright. I got a brush. Um grab the brush that's a little too big. Let me see if I can find them. I think it's this one. Let's see what kind of point I can get on this big one first before I 
for a dual end. Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, it looks the tip. Yeah, I get a good, pretty good tip on that. I'll just use this. Gene's worked for a lot of different companies. Um, he's been in the industry longer than I have, uh, but I don't know if I've ever talked. I've worked for um, different publishers. I've worked on GI Joe, like doing colors, digital colors for their books. Um, with back when they were at uh, Image, through Devil's Do actually, I think that's after Image, when Devil's Do sprung up from from that company. And I started off doing colors, and then I did a cover for G.I. Joe for one of the graphic novels. It was, uh, hmm, I'll talk my head, I can't remember the title. It had like uh, snake eyes. It had uh, these giant polar bear men, kind of like were bears, we're going to call them. And I did the whole painted cover for that digital painting. And then from there, I, I did uh, an issue of Defects. It was a Devil's Due original superhero comic that Marv Wolfman wrote. And I did an issue of that. And a comic called Warstone that the, uh, the publisher also wrote, which is named uh, Josh Blaylock. And my brother also colored that one. That was like one of his first... Uh, credited gigs. Let's turn this around. Yeah, see, it's starting to shape, shape that head. But yeah, um, I did, after that I did, uh, I did some work for a European publisher, a French publisher called Humanoids Publishing, and. Uh, I did a series for them. I start off again. I start off doing a cover for the Inkle comic book, which is a comic character created by Mobius and Joe Dorowski. Uh, actually, the character's name is John DeFool. But I did a cover for them, and then I did a series for them called uh, Flywires in English and French. It's called uh, the Infini. And they brought that over, Humanized brought that over, English translation uh, a few years ago. And since then I did some work for Boom Studios. And I worked on uh, Hunter's Fortune, which is a four issue limited miniseries. And uh, I heard the people, fans said they liked it a lot, but uh, the two creators, who are also the publishers, they kind of broke apart. And so I don't think either one of them had the sole right to that character or the series, so just pretty much stopped right there. But I've also been doing stuff for them. Um, I did some zombie tale comics, short stories with them, Boom Studios. Uh, let's see, if there's any more. I said zombie tales. I did some covers uh, for Mr. Stuffins. It's like a, a teddy bear who is also a uh, government weapon. Just the covers on that one. They actually boom wanted me to draw the comic, but I I turned it down just because uh, the time I was in a place where I'm like I don't know if I want to draw a teddy bear running around. Now, if I would, they offer me that something like that, I would have done it now. But then 
I was like, nah. But I actually had fun doing the covers. I think after I did the covers, I was like, you know what? I could do this book. Oh, someone commented. Sorry about that. I didn't see that until now. Let's see. What time is it? Okay. Um, let's see. Have you ever seen... Have you ever watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Black Chester. Chester. Uh, no. I. It's funny. I was at Comic-Con. I was on the... Um, I was on the tram at Comic-Con and a guy had a poster that he, or a print of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and he was, I looked really sweet. He was telling me about it and uh, I'm like, yeah, definitely got to check that out. It sounded cool. It's like a fighting anime, right? Or manga. I think. I watched, um, I watched a, a YouTube video where they showed the artist like doing a full full color piece and it was really nice The name is so cool too, though. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Jojo. All right. Zoom out a little bit. See a better look of this. back with the dip pen, the nib, and just kind of start sharpening up some of these, some of these lines, some of these shadows, these shadows look a little rough, so let's see if I zoom in again. I should probably erase some of this pencil, get a better, clear view. These lines take so long to dry. And let's see. Huh. Yeah, see, look at that. See, what did I tell you? I snagged a little bit of that. Snagged a little bit. That's one thing I like about, about uh, digital is that, of course, you can go in and change that so much easier. But what I like about the uh, traditional is when you do make a mistake and you mess up, you have to use some ingenuity to try to figure out how to fix that because you can't just hit Control Z. So I don't sweat it. I used to get really ticked off like, oh man, why did I just ruin this whole drawing? But clean this racer off but now I'm just like eh it's a little bit of a nuisance but I can fix that easy I had a I did a commission piece for uh, a guy at a convention and um, I accidentally I think I accidentally dropped the nib and it had ink on it and it just rolled right across <laughs> it rolled right across the drawing and uh, I was like 
crap. I just, I only, he was going to be coming to pick it up in like, you know, 20 minutes, 10, 20 minutes. And I was like, man, you know what? I just took that splotch and I made like a background that looked like a horizon line of like islands in the back of this person. And it actually looked better than it did if I wouldn't have added that in. So sometimes you make a mistake. It's, it's actually, you gotta look at the positive side. Sometimes it's for the best. Because you end up going in a direction you never would have gone before. Yeah, I'm not even going to worry about racing. Because I can't tell which lines are dry or wet. And I want to hurry up and get this done so everybody can see the color phase. So I'm not going to race the face. I'm, I know the body's pretty much done. It's going to be dry. It's one of my favorite erasers, the Mono. Uh, they're really gentle on the paper, and it just, but it's really pretty rugged. You can get rid of the pencil really easily. It's a little on the expensive side, of it, I guess, for an eraser. Uh, maybe not too bad. I mean, two bucks. Depends on where you go. I went to, uh, a place that's near me it's called uh daiso it's a japanese store it's like a do japanese dollar store and uh i bought like a pack of mono mini mono erasers for like a dollar fifty really nice oh thanks all about art thank you let's see I'm trying to read the chats. Is agenda see a standalone comic or do you guys have plans for sequels? Um, the agenda is going to be, I believe we're starting off is going to be a four issue series, and then from there we can can expand on that. So yeah, we just kind of want to build the world. It's going to be forty eight pages and uh, each issue and we're probably we might i don't know if we're going to collect it um maybe you know that's a ways off but we want that it's going to be quarterly so that people can uh you know have time to uh read it and it's not too long of a wait get one every three months hopefully that'll help uh and people's budget you can fit that in their budget too I think it gives enough time where it's not every month, every month. But let's see. So I'm just gonna check in real quick. I want to make sure that these lines are actually dry. Uh, okay, yeah. If you just came in, you can see a little tiny mistake right there. I raced a wet spot, but. No big deal. Everything is fixable. Pretty much everything. I'm just erasing so I can actually see where I need to touch up. All right. Let's see the zoom out. All right. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfectly clean, but. So now I'm gonna go in with the uh, go in with the color. Okay. And I should have had a reference ready to make sure I get the colors right. Maybe I can pull one up real quick. But yeah, any other questions anyone has, go ahead and feel free to ask. Or any suggestions on uh, what they want to see drawn. I'm assuming maybe JoJo. I can do a character from JoJo, like, next time. And uh, oh, again, the contest I have going is for Agenda. 
the Indiegogo to help promote that. If you cut paste the link from the descriptions in your social media, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, just copy and paste that, put it in your social media and then tag my name, which I'm on all those platforms, tag my name and your name will be entered into a contest to win some art, some original art. Uh, it could be something of your request, pen and ink, black and white, or it could be what I'm doing right now tonight, which is going to be color. So yeah, just tag my name. And then if you're so inclined, help back us and get in on the, the comic. Let's see. Hmm. And what I'm using is I'm using a... Uh, This little palette, it's a pretty, it's not super expensive, but it's, it takes in, it's nice. It comes with a brush. Uh, sometimes I'll use like an aqua brush I'll take with me because it has the, uh, the water inside of it. So I don't have to worry about trying to find, trying to find a, a water cup or something to use. Okay, let's see. I think I'm going to use, I'll zoom in a little bit on the face. I'm going to find some skin tone. And uh, move it over here. I'll use a little bit of orange and yellow. to doing the watercolor is also another good tip is think of water as white so instead of adding white to lighten up a color that you have just add water and that'll be your white so that way the white of the paper will show through and I usually have a testing board that I use something I can test the color on see how it looks so far let's see Let's see. I'm going to add in think of the shadowed spots and once this is like colored in I can always go back over it with a dip pen and kind of add some stuff in so I'm not too worried about that Let's see, and I want for lighting, I want to think of, let's see, the lighting on his hair is, the light's coming from the left because you get the heavy shadow on this side. So I'm going to have the shadows on obviously the right side of his face, but I want to make it so with manga characters that are cartoon, you want to keep it simple. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to try to do realistic shadowing on a face that's really simple cartoony. So for colors, I just think of it as the same way you do with when you zip a tone it add gray tone shadows to a manga you just keep it very simple a lot of times you don't put anything on the face um, no shadows so I want color though and I don't want to just color it in so I'm going to a solid color I want to have some type of light source so I'll start where I know the shadows will be and that's from his hair a little overhang so I kind of add that in Keep the eyes clear. Put that drop shadow. And there's going to be some bangs that are, I have to fill in black. I'll just do that later. Let's put a little shadow. I know his neck's going to be shadowed out. I hope I'm getting this right, that his neck is actually showing the skin. It's not a collar. I don't think it's a collar. And a little shadow inside of his ear. And see, of course, shadow on the side of his face. And we'll just 
for the little bit maybe on the nose just a small smidgen okay yeah like I said you want to keep it pretty simple he's got a simple face so keep everything else simple though the shadows ignoring you guys just rambling on but let's see okay so got the face pretty much lighted I like to use the white of the paper is kind of like the highlight and let's see now I gotta figure out his his costume colors so yeah um trying to think of what other books I'm into right now uh, uh, let's see. Um, we have of course My Hero Academia One Punch Man someone mentioned Jojo uh, Assassination Classroom oh, there's another one some of these I find in uh, Japanese bookstores they have out here in California, they have Japanese bookstores uh, that sell these, the phone books, the really thick collections of like anthologies, manga and everything. So I'll find something I like, but I don't know the name because I can't translate the kanji. So, but there's some really great stuff I've been finding on there in those different magazines. And once in a while, they'll actually bring it here in the U.S. translate. Let's see. Okay. So, Midoriya. Midoriya Izuki. Okay, cool. Got the reference. Okay, looks like we're going with some gray. So, instead of just using black gray I'm gonna use some blue in there too and you can use red if you want to make it warm you know maybe that might be good let's see because we're gonna have his outfits green shadows will probably be no you know what? I'll keep it more blue I'll keep it cool okay. so we'll just follow the same lighting pattern The sides could be shadowed out. And I want to do some tutorial videos. This is not one of them, but I want to do one. And so if anyone has any questions or any things that they would like to see, like I said, just leave in the comment section. Okay, I see a comment. Um, no, I, I didn't go to school. Um, I did take classes whenever I could as a kid my mom would sign us my brother and I up for you know summer art class or something like that but and I would sign up for stuff like in uh, I did go to college just for a couple of years and I actually started getting into comic book professionally so I just kind of stopped go going but my goal was getting into uh, art and I actually learned but I, I try to learn from anything and anywhere I can. Like I, I like looking at YouTube videos. I just watch other artists work and I can kind of figure out what they're doing. But but yeah, I mean I definitely take any type of uh, advice or any type of tips from artists. I mean you can learn from anywhere. Nowadays, I mean, you, you have access to so much today, like in art. You can just talk to the actual artist, like here on YouTube. You can watch YouTube videos. But um, art school, I think, is good because uh, you make contacts there. 
not only, I mean, you meet a fellow artist who can join you in the struggle of trying to achieve perfection or just work, but it's good because you make contacts and you can actually uh, make good friendships where um, you can help each other out when you start getting into the actual professional field. So, let's see. So I don't know if you consider that. I guess you can consider it self-taught. Uh, I feel like I've learned from so much. My uncle, I have an uncle Dave, who has a. Uh, he taught. He had a store, that art store that sold art supplies, and he also sold um, art books. But then he taught classes as well. He had multiple classes going uh, over the whole course of the week for kids and adults. And um, at holidays, I'd always bug him and uh, show my art and my brother and I would always holiday or family get together was always about bringing our artwork and we show show Uncle Dave what we had and get his feedback and what he thought so I learned a lot there too and then I would go to comic conventions and different comic conventions different comic shows I would bug all the artists and just ask them, show my work, ask them questions like crazy. Let's see. Put this here so I see me mix. Yeah, it would ask tons of questions. Let's see. Boom, brown. Always ask questions though. I mean, you know, I mean, there comes a point where you gotta just start, you know, using your own judgment. But you should always be learning and trying to figure out things on your own. Like if you see another artist do something, when you reach a point where you're kind of like, hmm, I think I can figure out what he did, uh, you learn a lot by just by doing that too. It's like, I don't know, for me it kind of feels like being a detective. You're kind of trying to figure out, you're finding clues, you're trying to figure out how something was done. Okay, that's not too dark. Got my paper again. Trying to get the right color. I, I ran out of palette space. I should have grabbed my other palette. Let's see. And again, uh, thinking about the lighting, uh, the tops of this collar is kind of angled down or slanted inward, so it's catching that light. And even though this is all shadowed out right here, this one, it's a little bit lighter. So I can even take a clean brush and I can scrub some of that color off just lightly to kind of lighten it up a little bit. Use my finger. There we go. Kind of give it like a glow. Okay. Trying to find that shadow color for his gloves. On my screen, it's not showing it's working. Looks like I lost connection. Hmm. See, are you guys uh, still there?
Okay, I'm just gonna keep going like it's working, which I don't think it is. It says I'm offline, but I think I'm back. There we go. Okay, cool. Lost connection for a second there. Looks like I'm back. All right. Cool. Good thing I didn't turn it off. I was about to turn this off. Okay, so I got the color for Deku's, or Midori's glove. So I'm going to start going with that. And I'm going with the shadow direction that you see from here. So the cue is it's coming from the left side, the light. So I'm going to say his hand's kind of shadowed out here. Give a little bit of shape to these, to the hand. Okay, glad you're still here. You stuck it out. Well, it looks a little different on the screen. It looks a little brighter than it does on my my end. Oh well. Okay. My screen looks a lot darker. Is the one know where you guys cool all right yeah I started off doing traditional like paintings and then I went into digital for work doing different comic books which uh, was a lot cheaper than buying paints and boards and all the materials that is required. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. A little bit of shadow from the hair. Saying, just lost track. Oops, move it down. Get the knuckles.
Um, trying to keep it pretty simple with the shadows. Like I said, you can uh, win some original artwork by helping promote the agenda book. And you can either request a character, whoever wins, request a character and I will do a pen and ink drawing. Or you can have this piece that I'm doing right here, which is in color. Either way. Back out a little bit here. Okay. I'm going to add in the main color. But yeah, I used to work uh, digital. Um, and I kind of, I did it for so long. From, I went from traditional to digital, and then I'm back in traditional. I think mixing it up, doing both is good. At least kind of keeps you, at least keeps me um, motivated. There's always new things I like learning and trying different things out. And uh, you can actually, you can do techniques digitally and sometimes you uh, can apply that traditionally or vice versa. You, you do techniques traditionally in colors and then you're like, you know what? I should try that digitally. It's a little easier to control digital because you have the undo, you can mask off areas. Um, but it takes a little more time doing traditional uh, when you first start off, especially, but it is pretty rewarding. There we go. When you pull something off, it feels good. And then you can also have something to sell or give away after you're done. Yeah, that's the thing with traditional is like I still do my comic pages traditionally, so I use ink on paper, use some Bristol paper. But the good news is I can sell them afterwards after the book is published and it's finished, I could sell it off if I want to. And we are actually giving away pages of agenda, like actual art, uh, original pages. Uh, to people who back our uh, Indiegogo. It depends on the perks, uh, whatever tier you decide to help us out with, whatever you decide to give, whatever you can give. Uh, I can't remember exactly which which tier gives that uh, starts giving away comic pages. I'm not sure if it's 150 or Okay, let's see. Let's zoom in a little bit. And when I'm doing the colors, I kind of, it's like I don't act like I'm just coloring a coloring book. I actually still feel like I'm drawing in a way. So, like I added that little bit of a shape, like a muscle shape. Think of where the highlight would land and where the shadow of the muscle would be the in the forearm. And then you do the same thing in the arm here. Kind of in that bicep shadow where it separates. Okay. Put some more of that color. Just thinking of shadow. So yeah, anything else you guys are into? Someone mentioned Jojo. Oh, who's my favorite manga ka? Hmm. That's a good one. Um of course there's a lot of different guys I like. Um I like I mentioned this Naoki Urasawa, 20th Century Boys. And he's definitely one of my favorites. 
Um, you know, I got to find out the name. There's one guy, he does a book called, um, well, he did a book called uh, Faust, Metal Guardian. And that guy, he does another book, which I'm not sure of the title because it's in kanji. But I picked it up at a bookstore, Japanese bookstore, and it is fabulous. It's amazing. This guy is one of my favorite artists, um, my favorite manga cause. Uh, let's see, I have to find his name. If you look up Faust, Metal Guardian, definitely. I mean, his stuff since then, because I think that stuff was from the 90s. But it's even better now. It's crazy. Okay, let's see. Yeah, what are some of your guys' favorites? Your favorite manga cos or manga cos? I'm kind of interested in what people like out there. Also like uh, Katsuhiro Otomo, he's one of my favorites, definitely. Akira, one of my favorite mangas. Uh, Lone Wolf and Cub, that's another one I actually like a lot. And there's a bunch of dudes I can name some of their mangas, but the names I gotta get, gotta really memorize that. Oh yeah, that's it. Tetsuro Ueyama. I think that's that's the middle guardian Faust, right? Faust. Okay, let's see back it out a little and kind of see overall view. Okay, yeah, he's green hair too. Okay. And like I said, when I'm doing the colors, I'm kind of drawing. This in my mind, I'm kind of drawing it too at the same time, adding in shadows that I didn't pencil in. Kind of add a little more depth into this, a little more life. the chat Tite Kubo Go Nagai oh yeah I know Go Nagai Yasuhiro Naito oh yeah it's, that's who Naito is Naito is the one that does Trigon or Trigon Trigon right it's funny uh, Go Nagai is actually one of my brother's favorites Mikey He got me into his stuff too. Okay. Having a little more wrinkles kind of make it more interesting. It looks too bland with just that white space. It's kind of adding more, more going on in this jacket. There we go. All right, I think I'm gonna go back into the hair now. And that's pretty much, that's pretty easy. I think it's just green, so. I'll have to check out that Tite Kubo. I probably know who he is, his work. I just, the names, I gotta get better at learning these guys' names. Go for the hair. I think I need more green. I 
And what's cool too is doing watercolors, you can, uh, you don't have to worry too much about like doing something that you don't like. You can kind of go in and if you use like water and a brush, you can kind of gently scrub. If you have a thick enough paper you work on, you can kind of scrub out the color. So let's see. I'm going to start off a little bit lighter towards the top. See, it looks a little more green, yellowish green, but that's okay because I'm going to go over it again and darken it up as we go downwards here. So I'm going to kind of work quick. And that's one thing, watercolor is, is trans, translucent, so, but it's still it's pigment floating in water. So when you go over the black areas, you're going to see it's going to lighten up the black a little bit. So we can always touch that up if we need to later on. kind of iron out some of the areas where it's a little dark blobby kind of even it out here we go starting to look like Deku Midoriya starting to tilt here ah Tite Kubo created bleach ah, okay of course bleach that's another one I have to watch. I know some really big Bleach fans. I have some friends who are really, like I have friends who are diehard uh, One Piece fans. And then they're fans of uh, Bleach and um, Naruto. And of course, last but not least, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. I have the comic, a bunch of comics of the Dragon Ball, and I didn't watch a lot of the anime, so I've, and I didn't get far in the manga, so I know all the, don't know all the characters, but I was in a store, I was in uh, one of the Japanese stores in my area, and they were playing uh, Dragon Ball. Whoops, I just totally splatted. They were playing Dragon Ball. Uh, I think it was Dragon Ball, the newest one with uh, the character that looks like a dog. Look at that. See, I accidentally splatted it because um, my brush, I had this tripod and I was trying to move and <laughs> hit the tripod. Not bad though. Like you said watercolor, you can brush it out. But no, they had the, uh, on the Dragon Ball, that character is like a purple dog character looking. It looked like a dog. And uh, it looks like an Egyptian cat or something. But uh, man, I was like, mesmerized watching that i was just sitting there standing there watching it for like 20 minutes before i was like i better get going <laughs> okay how long has bleach been going that's been going for a while a lot of these different mangas animes have been going for years I mean, Naruto, they even have kids now. They're, it's a second generation. It's crazy. The characters have started having kids. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just going to put a little water on the brush. And we're going to kind of blend this in a little more. Kind of keep that... darker towards the bottom. There are more of a fade. Just a little bit in here. All right. Zoom out a little. There we go. Let's see. Gonna 
He relaxed the comment again. Okay. Oh, Bleach ended in 2016. Wow, 15 years. Man, that is something that's crazy. Wow, no wonder there's diehard fans, man. I mean, it's like people growing up their whole life with something. Half your life. I'm just going to add a little bit more into this yellow material. Just a little bit more instead of just white. Wow, yeah, no joke, man. 15 years. Man, I had no clue it was that long. Okay, so let's see, I'm gonna add some more. Finish this up real quick here. You guys got some something to do? I gotta get back on my comic pages too. Get cranking on those. Okay. Going to the pads. Zoom in. So yeah, man, 15. I think um, my one of my favorites was uh, Akira. And that series went on for like 10 years. I'm kind of glad I came in on the tail end of that because <laughs> I came on after it was out because I wouldn't want to wait. I mean, that'd be... I don't know, that would be an experience, 10 years worth of uh, material. Just growing up with something for 10 years of your life. Definitely would help shape your taste and uh, your sensibilities. And manga. And I think uh, that's one of my favorite ones. Let's see, Bone from Color, like I mentioned that one, definitely one of my favorites. I think because I, I like Japanese samurai culture. And I like uh, films like uh, Zatoichi, or the TV series Zatoichi, uh, and Tishiro Mufune is samurai. Uh, Samurai films. Okay, I see. Zoom it out again. All right. Okay, you see I splatted a little bit there. I think that was on my hand. So I'm pretty much close to done here. I'm just gonna do a couple of things. See if I can scrub this out a little. go and hmm I feel like it's missing something I think I might put some reflective light in 
like that little shadow inside of the shadow. To give it that illusion of reflective light. But yeah, again, if you're watching this, uh, please like the channel or subscribe to the channel, like the video. And I think it automatically uploads again. We'll see. But uh, like every video. I guess I never saw the importance of liking the video and then someone pointed out to me why. Okay. Then we want to spread the news on the projects. And like I said, tutorials coming. If you have any suggestions or any things that you are interested in, like seeing in the future videos, I'm going to do some live videos, but I also want to do just some pre-made videos. So you can just watch like a 10 minute video instead of like an hour, two hour long video. Because I know it can get tedious and people are busy. And if you have time to kill, I guess it makes sense. I mean, but, uh, yeah i might go in and add some stuff into this like in the background later some like little touch-ups but i think i'll call it finished for now just so uh can move on to get some uh work going on the pages here not one thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna do what i did to the uh gloves and a little bit of color into the white areas, kind of faded up. With watercolor, wherever you pick the brush up last is where it's darkest. So you want to start in the lighter areas and then kind of work your way down into the darker areas. There we go. Just a little bit of something in there. Okay. Um, oh, one more thing. The eyes. I just got to add that in. I can't forget the eyes. They are small but important. Well, not really small. There we go. Now we actually have some eyes there. But yeah, uh, any, uh, like I said, anything you guys want to see in their future in the next videos, I'm going to do it at least every other day. I'm going to force myself to sit down and just do this. And uh, like again, just share the Instagram, Instagram link on your social media, tag my name, and that'll enter you into a contest to win some original art of your request, any character of your request, pen and ink, black and white. Or you can win this piece that I'm just finishing up today in the video. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, Black Chester, just want to say thanks. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate, uh, well, I don't know who's watching, who you are, but whoever you are, thank you for watching. Thanks for uh, commenting. Appreciate it. And just check out the next videos coming up. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.